Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. You guys were asking for an episode about editing software and today I want to show you the basics on how to use Magix Video Deluxe. Actually in America it's named Magix Movie Edit Pro and I want to show you how to use it and what the basics are, how to edit your footage safely to get awesome footage out of it. And because I'm awesome, you guys should subscribe to my channel because within the advent season I'm giving away not only one, not only two, not three, not four, but five times this super awesome editing software and even one with an original editing keyboard. Now stay tuned, fly safe and edit safe. Okay, once the software is installed and running, we can choose whether we want to load an existing project or a demo project or whether we want to create a new project. And we are going to create a new project and first off, we are going to give our project a name and I'm going to name mine, I don't know, editing demo. And next we can choose whether we want the automatically create proxy files option to be activated or to be disabled. I would actually recommend every single user with, for example, a slower computer or a user that works with high resolution footage from full HD to 4K to have this um, function turned on, to leave this turned on. Why is that so? Creating proxy files means that while the computer imports the files, it converts the files down to a lower quality. No worries, of course later on you will save the files to your computer in high resolution again, but while working on the files, while editing the files, you will be working on low resolution files to have a good and a fluent workflow. This is actually quite awesome, but of course there is a small con and the con is that um, converting the files takes quite a few minutes. And um, actually my hint on that is import the files later on altogether and go and have a nice coffee and after that you can enjoy the editing process. Next we head to the movie settings and we can choose from this list. There is NTSC for America for example and PAL for Europe for example. But I am not going to categorize myself like that, I am a human only. And I'm going to choose Ultra HD with uh, a frame rate of 29.97 frames per second, aspect ratio 16 to 9, everything perfect. Ultra HD and uh, audio sample rate is perfect as well and I am going to tap OK. And that finally creates the new project. Okay, now let's go ahead and import some footage. We first off have to find the folder where our footage is located. That might be here and you can go to your desktop or whatever you want or you simply choose a hard drive and in my case I have an SSD card that I'm going to work on editing samples and now we find our files. But do we simply want to take them and import them or do we before want to review them? Pretty smart decision if you now change this setting from list to large icons and now you can by tapping at the plus symbol decide about the size of the thumbnails and you can um, I don't know check your footage and you can say okay I want to import this one and that one and this one and that one because we keep in mind that creating the proxy files takes quite a while. And actually before we go ahead and again import the files we can uh, review them by simply tapping at the play icon. And now the computer starts playing the files back. Not very fluent because the proxy files have not already um, been created. And actually, of course, later on this process is going to look smarter and smoother as well. Next to the review function, there is another cool thing that we can do. And that is that we can only import a part of a video. For example, if you are still working with a GoPro or whatever, uh, you are setting up the camera and the camera was already recording and you don't want to import the entire thing, you simply click at this icon in the middle and now this uh, blue bar appears. And now we can take the endings of the bar and I can say okay only until here I want the footage to be imported and I want the footage to be imported from. You can see I don't need this where the camera is still I don't know getting set up from here on. Oh excuse me or from here on. And now if I say okay I only want to import this very um, piece of the one file and now you can see I got rid of this ending and I got rid of this beginning. I simply tap and hold onto the file and drag it into the timeline and now let go. And now it only imports that part of the one clip. And next up we can of course go ahead and do, uh, do the same with all the other files or we are simply going to import them all and I'm going to import all of them right now. 
to import the files you can simply hold on to one of the files and tap at this arrow symbol or you can take several files and simply drag them down here into the timeline and of course we remember that dragging the files down there now takes a while because the computer is creating the proxy files in the background as you can see it down here creating proxy and now i'm going to skip this process for you and we will be back in a few seconds okay now that the files are converted and imported we can go ahead and start sorting them and that is actually quite cool we can uh, i don't know take this clip and move it to the front or this one and move it to the back and right now I'm not quite sure how I want to sort them already I can choose the professional timeline to appear by tapping at timeline mode and now we have the entire timeline here we can zoom in or out whatever we like and before we actually apply some effects or edit we can of course um, take some music and drag that into the timeline as well or and now we can listen to it Okay, pretty, pretty good. Now, what can we do next? First off, I want to show you guys how you can play back the footage. Simply move the cursor around somewhere and tap at play and tap at stop. But of course, as a shortcut, you can tap at the space bar as well. Goes quite a little faster. And now we can make decisions what footage we want to be at the front and I have a thought on one clip let me oh yeah this one. Oh yeah we simply tap and hold to move it away now I activate all other files and move them away and bring this one to the front now I zoom in okay now you can see that the beginning is quite a little shaky and I don't want the beginning to be part of this video maybe from here on but how can I finally cut the video a video file can be cut by either tapping at the scissor symbol up here or by tapping T as a shortcut or by dragging down here the footage hold and drag and now you can see the footage just got cropped down and maybe until here again I can for example tap at the scissor and it will cut that one clip into half if I want to delete the end of the clip I can either tap at delete at our at my keyboard or right uh, click and now delete objects okay now let's just add some music of course the clip is all already somewhere in the back but I don't care right now now let's just line things up for example we could bring this to the front and now I press at the space bar to play the clip back Okay, I want the clip to end already here. I'm going to make it a little shorter. Bring it to the front and line it up. Now it looks like this. Okay, now I can already give you some hints. Of course, we can cut our file together with the music. I'm going to align it. But do I actually want it to just appear like this? No, of course we don't. We, of course, want uh, the clip to fade in. And there are quite a few fade effects if you click on fades up here. But actually, I wouldn't be using those entirely because all of these look kind of cheap and look kind of, I don't know, like back in the 90s. We don't want to use those. We simply want to use some good old effects. We are going to take this circle symbol and we are going to tap and hold. And if I play the file back right now. And of course, at the end, I want um, the file to fade again. Hold. And again. Perfect. And now we got to go ahead and we can take the next clip. But actually, we could go ahead and you could watch me creating this clip in forever. Um, you can watch the entire clip at the end, of course, if you're interested in that. But now let me show you how to actually work on the single clips after the editing, after the cutting process. We simply tap at one of these that we want to work on and we tap effects. And now what we want to bring up is the video effects submenu. And we can see brightness and contrast, color, 
color correction, chroma key, and all that kind of stuff. And I would go ahead and start editing the brightness and contrast. Um, the brightness is fine, I think. You could always raise the contrast a bit. Maybe even play around with the HDR gamma a little. Wow. No, I don't like it. Next, we go to color because we want to bring the saturation up a bit. I think the white balance is quite good. Actually, you could, of course, change the... Uh, using the pipette tool, you could change the white balance, but I don't want to go ahead and do that because I think the white balance is quite okay. We could even tap auto color. No, that's way too much. Let's just go back by tapping um, control Z. We go up here and we are going to set things manually ourselves. Saturation, maybe like this. And of course, there are quite a few more things that you could play around with. I could even increase the sharpness a little bit. Maybe to 14. Will be looking quite nice later on. Of course, you can play around with the speed of a file to speed it up or whatever you like the best. And actually, you got to do this with every, every single clip in here. But of course, at the end, the entire thing is going to look quite great. Okay, one last thing within this very, very basic tutorial. If you want to apply a title effect, you can either tap at title up here. And that now loads a list of presets, uh, templates, the fonts, for example, or intros and outros. Of course, you can always look at them by tapping at the play, at the review symbol. And I would always choose a decent title if I wanted one. But I'm going to create one myself manually. We can either do that by tapping manually and now adding something or you simply tap at T, the title editor. And now we can, I don't know, write whatever we want and I'm going to say Tom's Tech Time. And I say OK. And now we have this title here and at the right hand side we can, for example, I don't know, change all kinds of settings like this. Now we could make it a little bigger. Of course, this is looking stupid right now, so uh, don't just uh, copy that. Um, of course, you can apply a 3D effect, uh, a shadow effect, or you can mess around with the borders. But I would always tell you to um, stay calm and apply add, uh, as few effects to an image as possible, because I think these extraordinary effects are kind of, I don't know, 90s again. And um, yeah, of course, you could right now go ahead and... Um, Take the circle symbol again, okay, and fade it in. You can work with the length of the title and you can fade it out again. And there are some animations, so you could say from left to right. But as I said before, um, when it comes to titles, always stay conservative. Uh, don't have any animations, any stupid animations and um, no 3D and stuff like that. Keep things simple at the beginning and get into depth um, with more um, knowledge in editing. Finally, if I wanted to render my extraordinary project and uh, create the file, I would tap at this symbol up here, the arrow symbol, and that brings up um, some options. I can either directly load it up to um, YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, whatever or export it for, I don't know, a Kindle Fire or an iPhone or iPad or whatever. Or I could even export it as a 3D movie or as a simple video file, which is always what I recommend. But there aren't that many settings. I can only choose HD quality 2, which is full HD, but this is a 4K file. Is there no possibility for rendering in 4K? Of course there is. We shut this off. We click at file, export movie, and now we can again choose from various formats. My hint is always choosing MPEG-4, which is quite compressed, but very awesome image quality. Okay, now this menu looks actually quite better. As you can see, 4K, I mean Ultra HD, if you want to be exact, with 29.97 frames, 69 aspect ratio, standard 2D, which is quite enough. If you want to change the settings, you can bring this list up. And you can go, uh, for example, full HD or whatever. Or you can even set one up yourself and save that. Um, but let's just keep things as they are. Finally, by tapping at this folder icon, we can name our file and find the right storage location 
And there's another cool thing that we can choose. It's shut down PC automatically after a successful export for bigger projects. For example, if you're rendering the project overnight. And uh, that's pretty actually nice. And if you now tap OK, the computer is going to render the file. There will be quite more editing videos on this software online. So check them out yourself. And uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are awesome, you are probably going to leave a donation at tomstechtime.com slash donate. Thanks for watching. This was Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Over and out. Stay tuned. Fly safe.